Hello, beloved. This is Tracy L. Moore, a.k.a. The Purposeful Poet, bringing you spiritual truths through poetry. I also bring you greetings from Chesapeake Christian Center in Chesapeake, Virginia, where life is unlimited. My purpose is to encourage, uplift, and inspire you to be your best for Christ. And I'm here again today with more Motivation on Monday. That's M-O-O-R-E, Motivation on Monday. And the poem for today is entitled, The Righteousness of God in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. There is no condemnation to those who walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. In Christ, I've been perfected while he sanctifies me and I enter into his rest. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. My sins are separated from me as far as the east is from the west. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. He exchanged my sin and shame for his righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. My sins have been remitted and I am truly blessed. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm empowered to prosper and destined for success. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I'll not let Satan deceive me. I will pass the test. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. No one can take it from me and I'll continue to confess. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. The other day I made a mistake. Although I know it's unavoidable and nobody's perfect, I hate making mistakes. But I guess the positive outcome is that every time I make a mistake, God gives me the opportunity to reflect and get a deeper revelation and a clearer view of how he sees things. That means I learn new lessons. That's good, right? Unfortunately, during that incident, it took me hours to learn the lesson and get out of the condemnation. But I can say I've come a long way because I got out of it in less than a day. It used to take days, sometimes weeks back in the day, depending upon the situation. So I thank God for spiritual growth. We all will be tested in this area of condemnation. And today my goal is to remind you of some things that you probably already know, but will help you to get the victory when you are tested. If we are going to win the battle against condemnation, we need to keep the following thoughts in the forefront of our minds. Number one, the origin. We may call it self-condemnation, but we should remember that it's actually satanic condemnation. Because as you know, it originates from the devil. He injects negative thoughts into our minds and fools us into thinking that they're our thoughts so we won't wage a counterattack. Therefore, the first step to nullifying condemnation is to fully recognize where it's coming from. Number two, the idolatry. We must also recognize that when we accept the enemy's condemnation and accept it as our own by agreeing with him, we have slipped into idolatry. Condemnation is a form of idolatry because it's an attempt to punish ourselves for our own sins and pay the penalty for our own sin apart from Jesus' death on the cross. And it's an attempt to appropriate our own righteousness. Number three, the consequences. There are some unfortunate consequences that come with condemnation that should motivate us to fight against it with all that we have. Condemnation pollutes our spirit with negative emotions. We fail to receive God's best when we lose faith because we don't think we deserve anything from God. We try to hide from God unless we deliberately make an effort to overcome this human tendency. Finally, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is shut down in our lives. Accepting Satan's condemnation is simply not worth it. Number four, the remedy. Since condemnation is a renegade thought from the devil, run amok, we must cast down these condemning thoughts and bring them into captivity to the obedience of Christ, as stated in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Furthermore, we've got to deliberately think thoughts about our righteousness, which are clearly stated in the word of God, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, and speak these thoughts out of our mouth. If we have to say, I'm the righteousness of God a hundred times before the condemnation loses its grip, then that's what we have to do. Therefore, when condemnation comes, we have to recognize where it's coming from, make a conscious decision to refuse to engage in idolatry. We've got to keep in mind the negative consequences that will come about if we don't deal with it effectively and rebuke the devil. And finally, we need to take the thoughts of condemnation captive and replace them with the word of God, speaking the word of God out of our mouths and pleading the blood of Jesus over our minds. We've got to learn to forgive ourselves quickly and keep it moving. And Joyce Meyer put it this way, 
climb out of the pit and skip the guilt trip. That's truly God's desire for us. Now let's go out and make it a good week. Let's continue to focus on Romans 8 and 1. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. I invite you to check out my blog at tracylmore.com. And while you're there, you can sign up to receive my bi-weekly newsletter as well. If this content has blessed you, please click the like button below and click the subscribe button if you're watching on my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. This is Tracy L. Moore, a.k.a. The Purposeful Poet, signing off, and I look forward to seeing you next week. May God bless you real good.